If you like the video, please consider supporting us on Patreon. I just assume, I, I, not assume, I state in my, in my paper that uh, I'm, this is a part of, the, of what you're getting from me from pain. Oh, cool. It's one of our episodes. Welcome to Pull My Focus Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking. Today, we tell you how to make your audio levels not suck. Today, I just want to give you a quick little help in some of the things that drive me a little nuts, and that's audio levels that are not set properly in your videos. And this also happens to podcasts, too. It drives me nuts. I'll be listening to a podcast on the bus, and the levels are great. And then the next podcast comes on, and I can barely hear the people talking. So I crank up my volume to the maximum. The next show comes on, the volume is perfect, and I blow my ears out. And this is all because of a lack of knowledge of something that's called gain and something called compression. So I just wanna help out. I gotta help, I gotta help, I gotta do this. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to talk about really fast. I'm not gonna get into a deep dive. If you know nothing about audio, don't worry. Just click the buttons I tell you to click. There, I'll tell you something about um, a project that I'm doing that will help you a little more if you want to dive more deep. But right now, let's look at this. But before I get started, time for some sake. Uh, don't drink and edit. Actually, maybe you do want to drink and edit. Here we go. Got some audio here and some video from a project we did for the 920 special, which is, yay, a dance that I happen to love, the Lindy Hop. It's here in San Francisco, and let's take a look at this. It's a dance that's been around for almost 100 years, yet people are constantly finding new ways to move to the same music. Okay, so this guy happens to be Kirk Teru, which is uh, who was one of the owners of the 920 special. And he's fine, and we had a lavalier on him, and everything's fine. There's actually some noise in the background, but the lab is closer to him, so that the noise is, is negligible. Um, but the level, if you notice. Um, and it's a way for people to, to express themselves. And it's really cool to see, watch old clips of people dancing to the same song that you're dancing to 100 years later. So if you notice the level, and right now I have my uh, dB meter on static peaks, which is why these uh, yellow dashes don't go away when I press stop. It, I think Premiere defaults at dynamic peaks, and dynamic peaks, they'll actually disappear and after you press stop. So for this example, I'm showing you static peaks. Some of it is very similar. So I can show you the, the, the dB level. Now, you may think that's fine. You, you might crank up your, you know, your, your volume at home and go, oh, that, that's great. I can hear him clearly. But it's not great because it's going to be relative to everything else that you're competing with on YouTube or on Vimeo or wherever. Okay? So when I do this, I want dialogue to be in the neighborhood of negative, three, negative six and negative three decibels. That's where I want my dialogue to be. And if you're adding things like music and sound effects, you want... I think you want your dialogue to kind of stand out and be heard. So anywhere between negative six and negative three is where I'm going to be shooting. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, one way we can do it is we can use this little rubber band thing, this little line. See this guy? And you can just, okay, we can crank it up. So, oh, it only goes up to six, though. Oh, what am I going to do? Well, let's see how it, let's hear it. It's an old dance, right? It's, it's a dance that's been around for... And that's the loudest part of his his chat. When he starts, he's really excited. We're still well below like negative nine. So let's not do that. We're not gonna drag the rubber band up and down. And I know some people are gonna say, oh, there's more ways to drag the rubber band. Stop dragging the rubber band. All right, I'm gonna right click on this clip and go to audio gain. 
Uh, and the other, the other shortcut is just to hit G and it brings up audio gain. Now we have four options, set gain to, adjust gain by, normalize max peaks to, and normalize ma all max, all peaks to. Well, for speed's sake, ignore the first two. The first two, set gain to, and adjust gain by, don't even look at them because you know what they are? They're dragging the rubber band again. That's all it is. It's not intelligently looking at the entire clip and figuring out things for you. It's just saying, oh, you want to set the gain to, you know, if I say set gain to plus 20 dB. Boom. Yeah, it did it all right. Dance, right? It's, it's it did it and it peaked the crap out of my audio. Plus the first two, set gain to and, 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 and adjust gain by, they're not really paying attention to the clip at all. They're just raising and lowering the dB to what you say. And the problem with that is you make, well, there might be one part of the clip that peaks and that information is dead now. You can't do anything about a peaked audio, you know, clip. So ignore the first two. You have normalized max peak two and normalize all peaks two. Well, let's look at normalized max peak two. What does that mean? That means the highest, the loudest the sounds have gotten in that clip, the loudest the amplitude has gotten in that clip, you're going to normalize everything else based on that. So it's gonna look at the clip, and it actually did. If you look at the peak amplitude little button, it says peak amplitude in this clip is negative 13.2 decibels. That's the loudest it gets. So let's bring that up. Let's say negative three because we want the dialogue to be in between negative six and negative three. I'm going to say normalize max peak to negative three. Boom. And we are safe from peaking because the loudest it will get is negative three dB. Excites me about Lindy Hop is that it's an let me reset this guy so you can see old it. dance, right? It's it's a dance that's been around for almost a hundred years. All right, so now we know it won't get any louder than negative three dB. Okay, that's an easy, easy, quick way of getting your audio up. Now, if you have multiple clips, what you will use is I have I have this clip here of, of Kirk. I'm gonna undo that, and I also have this clip here of Ellen, who's also. Uh, she's worked with us before, but she's also one of the teachers at the 920 special. And her clip, it maxes out. Peak amplitude is negative 10.2 dB. All right, they're pretty much in the same range. But if I want to do both of these clips, I have to select both of them, bring up my audio gain, and then use normalize all peaks to. If I set normalize max peak to, it's going to take one clip's peak and apply it across the board. That's not good enough. You need to see every clip's peak and then normalize to that peak. So you're going to use normalize all peaks to, I'm going to say negative three, or you can give it some leeway. You can say negative four, negative, anywhere between negative six and negative three. Boom. And now when we have Ellen talk. I love Lindy Hop since the first time I took a lesson uh, eight or nine years ago. I took a little. So when she says I love, she really starts off strong. Notice how that doesn't peak past negative three. I love Lindy Hop since. So it's perfect. Now, I wouldn't suggest use, I don't actually use this method often, or if I do use this method, I use a little bit of gain, okay, which is what we're dealing with. I normalize a little bit. I wouldn't normalize up to negative three. I would normalize maybe to negative six or something like that, unless I'm a little lower. And I would use is a uh, multiband compressor. I would use the multiband compressor. Let me show you that real quick. So I'm going to undo these heights so they're back to the normal one. And I talk about this a lot in a lot of videos. The audio track mixer. And this is a this the, the multiband compressor is a plug-in that you'll add to the clip. I don't add to clips though. I usually have my dialogue on one track. Notice here I have my dialogue on one track. In fact, I would do this. Rename it to dialogue. Boom. And now I, and I would set up my project so that all my dialogue is on the one track. And sometimes I'll set up different people on different tracks of dialogue, depending on whether maybe Kirk's voice would be different than Ellen's voice, so I might have to do different things. So for this case, one track. We're going to go window. Audio track mixer. 
this upper part won't be open. You have to find this little arrow, click it down, and then you open up uh, this little panel here. And for those who just want to get it done, check it out. I'm going to go amplitude compression, multiband compressor. Done. Really done. Go ahead. Scoot along. We'll see you later. Now, what this is doing is it usually will default to, you can double click it and look at the interface. It's basically simulating a compressor, a vocal, comp uh, an, audio, uh, an audio compressor. And the default should be broadcast. And that's typically good enough for you to just go off and run. Now, of course, this requires the audio kind of be in good shape when you bring it in. You want it to be in good shape when you bring it in. It's a little low, so we can work with that. I'm going to say broadcast, and now listen and watch the meters. What excites me about Lindy Hop is that it's an old dance, right? So we are so damn close to where we need to be, I could leave it alone and, and pretty much be happy. It's sitting around, you know, maybe negative 5 dB. It's around negative 6. And what the multiband compressor does is, what a compressor does in a nutshell, really simple nutshell, is it lowers the highs, the, the loudest parts, and it pulls up the lowest parts. It makes the dialogue more equal, more the volume more equal across the board. So there's not a lot of loud parts and a lot, a lot of soft parts. It brings them a little together. And you can play with this too. There's, uh, if you double click, you can look at all the presets. There's some fun ones too. There's like walkie talkie is one of my favorites. It sounds like this. That excites me about Lindy Hop is that it's an old dance. So it sounds like he's on a walkie talkie. And also if you, uh, yeah, if you right click it, you can get to the uh, settings a little faster. Internet delivery is one that I used to use a lot. I don't use it as much anymore. It's a little harsh. But the, the point is, make sure that your, your dialogue, that what you want to be heard gets heard. And it is at a level that's competitive with other videos. Because there are people out there who are going to have amazing audio. And if your video comes on next and no one can hear it, they're going to tune away. Or they're going to get really pissed. I think that's it for this lesson. I was trying to make it quick and easy. Um, I do want to mention that I have a Udemy course coming up. It should be done in the next few weeks, I hope. And it's about it's called Audio for Premiere Pro Users. It's all about things that exist below that upper part of the timeline. We don't go into any video. We only talk about audio. And some of the great things, additions in Adobe Premiere, which is one of them is the Essential Sound Panel, which is terrific for things like this. It's a really simple way of getting you through kind of your first pass on audio engineering and figuring out uh, how, to, how to process dialogue and sound effects and ambient sound and music. I think a lot of people will appreciate it because I've been getting a lot of requests for audio stuff in Premiere. Audio is super important, guys. The audio has to sound great. I, I don't care how good your picture is. Audio has to be good. Check out pullmyfocus.tv for all our uh, companion articles to our videos. And also, if you get anything out of what we're doing and you're enjoying what we're doing, please consider supporting us over at our Patreon site, which is patreon.com forward slash pull my focus just a dollar a month will help us continue to bring you awesome content like this on pull my focus helping people get great video i didn't have anything after that i don't know is that it yes all right never drink sake and do a tutorial because you get silly mm. oh <laughs>